Mr. Biswadeep, are you yes, able sir. to see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are starting. <clears throat> Bismillah rahman rahim You are having total 15 minutes with your patient. You should read your task very clearly. And this clinical consultation will be followed by five minutes of Viva with the exam. Okay? Okay, sir. So I am giving you three to four minutes to prepare this case well. Then we will move forward. Here we go. Dr. Biswadeep, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just a second, please. Okay. So, okay, I am giving you your timer. And your time starts now. Hello? Good evening. Are you Mr. Jia Khan? 62 years old? Yes, I am the same. Nice to meet you, sir. I am Dr. Bishri and I am the doctor in the clinic today. Mm -hmm. We will discuss about your health condition today. But before mm -hmm. that, I may need to ask you some question and also examine you. Is it okay for you? Fully okay with me. Okay. Nice. So please tell me what brings you here today. I am having uh, some loose motion as well as fatigue. And what I okay. believe is that my condition is getting worsen out now. Okay. Uh, may I know since how long do you have this uh, problem? I am having loose motion, I think for the last four years, but That's they were cool. getting improved in between. And I was admitted in the hospital back in my native country multiple times, but now they are fixed. Okay. So uh, when did you come from that country, the African country? I think it is just, if I'm not wrong, just two months back, I'm over here in UK. 
Okay, so you were uh, okay prior to your four, four years, right? Yes. Okay, since that you are having this period of loose motion, and is this problem getting worse in our time? Uh, yes, now it is getting bad. Okay, and have you noticed anything that causing this problem more frequent or became making it more worse? At least I'm not aware. Okay, and anything that improves the condition? Initially, I was uh, having this problem and I was having this problem. I was visiting in my native hospital and they were injecting me with some medications and it was getting improved. But now I believe for the last two or three months, it is getting bad. Okay, I want to ask you more question about this loose motion. May I know how much, how many times you go to the first stool? Now I am going more than four to five times a day. And how is the stool consistency? Is it hard, soft, or watery? Sometimes it is hard when I am having good days in between. But now, right now, I am having loose, watery emotions. Okay, and generally, does this stool floats in the water? No. Is it difficult to flush out? No. Have you noticed uh, any time that there is blood mixed with the stool or blood before or after passing the stool? It is happening. That I am having loose emotions mixed with blood. Okay. And it is for last four years? Is blood it in the stool? It is for the last four years, but now more worsened out. Okay. And have you felt any tummy pain along with the slow motion? Yes, I am also having tummy pains. Does this pain relieve after passing the stool? Uh, it is coming with the bowel movement. It is slightly getting better after loose motion. But yes, baseline pain remains there. Okay. And have you ever need to wake up at night due to this uh, loose motion? It is happening frequently. Okay. And uh, have you noticed in any change in if your food habit causing this more problem, this problem much more frequent, like eating uh, pasta or wheat products? Uh, no. Okay. Have you noticed any change in your weight recently? Now I am losing some weight. For how long? I think I am losing for the couple of months weight quite rapidly. Okay, and how much uh, weight have you lost, you suppose? I have lost, if I am not wrong, about four to five kilograms of weight. And have you noticed any change in your appetite? No. Okay, have you noticed any rash in any part of your body? Yes, I am also having some rash. Can I see it? Yes, you can see my rash. Just a second. Okay, you can see my rash. These are my rashes. This is my rash. Okay, is it painful it or is, is it itchy? It is very painful. Okay, and how Not, long do you have this kind of rashes? This rash, I am having it, if I am not wrong, for a couple of months. Okay. And have you noticed any lumps and bumps in your body? Do you have any rash anywhere in the body? Lumps and yes. bumps. I am teaching you, ask this question. Do you have yes, any rash anywhere in the body? Yes, okay. I do have another rash. This is my rash. Okay. Any other rash or skin uh, problem in your body? Uh, no. Okay. And any lumps and bumps in your body? No lumps, no bumps. Okay. Have you noticed any change in your uh, sleep pattern recently? No. You have told me about your fatigue, but do you have any excessive sweating or fever recently? No. Okay. Do you have any difficulty in swallowing the food? No. Any redness in your eye? 
If I am not wrong, it was happening about a year back. Then my GP prescribed me with some drops and it all was totally okay. Okay. And have you uh, noticed any nausea, any thrown up condition like nausea, vomiting, anything recently? No. Any shortness in, in your oral cavity or any pipette part? No. Have you noticed any pain sorry, in any joint? Sorry, I am having sores. I am having a sore what? in my mouth, not in private part. Can you show it? Sure. Okay. Is it painful? It is slightly painful. How many days you are having this kind of condition, uh, sore? They are recurrent. And I think this is third episode of the past four and a half years. Okay. Have you noticed any pain in any, any joint? No. Okay. Have you feel any shortness of breath any time? No. Okay. Do you have any chest pain? No. Any in, uh, difficulty in getting up from sitting posture? No. Any spinning of head? Uh... Sorry, again repeat. Any spinning of head uh, when you are standing? No. Okay. May I know, do you have any medical condition? Uh, no, I have not been diagnosed by any condition till now. But yes, this tummy problem is there from years. Okay. And do you take any regular medication? No. Okay. Do you take any over-the-counter medication? I'm just trying some uh, multivitamins. That's it. Okay. Have you noticed any pain in any part of your body? Yes, this rash. Rash is quite painful. Okay. Except the rash, there is no pain, I suppose. No. And have you Except noticed any change in your the posture? rash and the tummy pain. There is no other pain. Okay. And have you noticed any change in your vision recently? No. Okay. Uh, do you know any other medical condition running in your family? Uh, I don't know whether it is linked or not. My uh, mom okay. is having something called microscopic colitis. Okay. My brother is having Whipple's disease. My okay. sister, she has been diagnosed as a case of Etel secondary to celiac disease. My father okay. is having uh, something called cancer, the widespread cancer in the large bowel. Okay. And when was he diagnosed, the, your father, the cancer? She was he was diagnosed at the age of, if I'm not wrong, 58 years. Okay. And do you smoke? I love smoking. Okay. How many sticks per day? Almost 30 sticks per day. Okay, I should suggest that you stop, should stop smoking. If you wish, we can refer you to the smoking cessation clinic, but they will help with that. Okay. Is it okay for you? May I okay, know? Do you, do you take alcohol? No. Okay. Do you drive? Yeah, I do drive. Okay. And may I know how do you, what do you do for a living? Uh, I am working as a shopkeeper over there in UK. Okay, and are this health condition is affecting your uh, job life? Of course, it is disturbing my business and I am unable to focus on my clients when I have to go to washroom again and again. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. I will definitely try to help you with that. But uh, may I know, have you traveled to any part of our world recently, except your country and UK? No. Okay. So uh, let me recapitulate. You are having uh, the loose motions for four years along with a tummy pain and sometimes tummy distension and some painful rashes in your oral, oral cavity and body part. Is it that? Anything I, you want to add? Nothing. I want to examine you. For sure you can. I want to check for the pulse. Is it ready? Or weak. So you are checking for the pulse and the pulse is exactly like outside. Okay. 
uh, I want to check the pallor and icterus. You are checking for the eyes, and these are the eyes. Okay. I want to palpate your abdomen. If you have, if you feel any pain during my examination, please tell me. Okay. Uh, so you want for to do superficial palpation or deep palpation or visceral palpation? I first of all I drew this uh, superficial palpation. If no tenderness is complained, then I will go for deep palpation for the any organomegaly. You are doing a superficial palpation by exposing the patient tummy coming at the level of the patient and your forearms are exposed. You are checking again the consent if there's any pain and you are doing superficial palpation while looking towards the patient's eyes. And superficial palpation is a normal. Okay. Uh, no you are left no with or... almost two minutes from now. So Mr. Jones, May I know what is your yeah, Mr. Jia Khan? What is, may I know how what is your concern? My concern is: Do you think that my condition is the condition which is running in the family? Well, we uh, first of all we need to do some tests. Well, mainly the one camera test through your back passage. After doing this you know, camera passage, we can assure you. But definitely, the things running in uh, in your family, like the cancer in your father. Uh, maybe one possibility, but the most common possibility we are thinking about is a condition called inflammatory bowel disease. Have you mm -hmm. heard about that? No. Okay, it is in a, it is a condition where the soreness of the gut uh, causing this uh, frequent loose motion and the pain pain in your tummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do mm -hmm. you have any other concern? Do you think that my condition, which is coming in your mind, is to, to leak your rebel? Well, what I can say, it's not totally curable, but we will suggest you some medicine that will keep the disease under control. And if something uh, happens like that, what you're suffering from right now, you may flare up, then we may add some other medications like steroids, which will suppress the, your different system and causing the decrease in the symptoms. Is it okay Are for you? there any specific precautions which you want to give me to get safe from these episodes of loose motions? Well, uh, what I can say that you should take the medicine frequently, whether Dr. Tato stays will come in, and you should uh, uh, avoid the spicy foods. And we also refer you to some dietitian. Uh, so that they will uh, give you enough nutrients because this kind of disease can cause the deficiency in some of minerals. Like Time you are having the low is up. Okay. Please tell positive findings in your case, including the history findings as well as examination finding. We need a very consolidated summary from you. Okay. Uh, this uh, 62 years uh, on an old gentleman, Zia Khan, immigrant from an African country, is suffering from the uh, frequent loose motion, which is on and off for the last four years, along with some thumb, uh, pain abdomen and some abdominal distension. He also complained of the blood mixed with the stool, and he has lost weight in the last two months, along with a decreased appetite. He has also seen, uh, he has also noticed some soreness in his uh, ulcer in his mouth and also one uh, ulcer, uh, two ulcer in a uh, uh, skin, mostly the suggestive of the pyroma gangrenosum. And uh, in, in, the, in the past history, uh, uh, he, he does not have any known medical condition, although his father has, has a previous history of the cancer in the gut for, at the age of 58 years. Now, after admission, he's in a, on an exon examination. He has a pallor, and on after the, uh, and the pulse uh, uh, is regular, but is a trachycardia, and the BP is uh, hundred by seventy. And yes, the inflammatory marker is high, so it's suggestive of the inflammatory lesion. And along with the history of the blood mix stool and weight loss, it's uh, this kind of uh, this this patient is most probably suffering from uh, inflammatory bowel disease. My what are other... your top differentials? Then I will summarize the case for you. Okay. Uh, my top differential first is the inflammatory bowel disease. Second is the uh, any malignancy in the gut, especially uh, CA colon. 
Uh, third, is there any celiac disease? Okay. So my patient, Mr. Zia Khan, 62 years of age, shopkeeper by profession, known a smoker, presented with the history of loose motion mixed with blood and abdominal pain. Patient is giving this history for the last four and a half year with the recent worsening of loose motions and fatigue. Patient is also complaining of weight loss, constipation, pyoderma gangrenosum, aradema nodosum, and oral sore. Past history is relevant for attack of uveitis about a year back. Family history is relevant for IBD as well as early age CA colon. Examination revealed that this patient is having anemia with well circumscribed oral sore as well as active aradema nodosum and pyoderma gangrenosum. Considering the risk factors, patient age, family history, patient's narration, and clinical findings. My differentials are this, 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 this. Clear? Yes, sir. So we should be very well organized. We should know exactly how to present the case. Okay, so now tell me your top diagnosis. IVD, CA colon. Okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, any uh, celiac proof, leg disease. Okay. Are we able to explain celiac disease with the bleeding PR? No. Okay. Are you asking about any jaundice history? Mm, not, no. Are you asking about any tenesmus? Mm, I asked about any pain in, uh, during defecation after. Tenesmus is sense of dissatisfaction after each bowel movement, which is indicating either some growth in the rectum or inflammation in the rectum. Very important. Okay, okay. so no problem. Are you asking about any mucus? No. Are you differentiating between the large bowel type IBD from the small bowel type IBD? Is there said about uh... Between loose motion, watery, and sometimes constipation, nothing there. I have not asked. Okay. 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 So, if we are saying that this is a patient of ulcerative colitis associated with its extra intestinal manifestation and complicated by CA colon, how is this narration? Maybe. More better. Okay. Now, before I explain exactly why we are bringing CA colon in this narration and why the jaundice was quite important in this case, I will tell you later on. First, we need a very good investigation plan about Mr. Zia Khan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll tell. Well, first, uh, what I Already the inflammatory marker is ESR and hemoglobin is uh, shown. So first of all, we'll do a ultrasonography of his abdomen. Then I will do the liver function test and the renal function test. And uh, then I will- Okay, uh, we need a rational behind each investigation. Okay. Well, uh, for the liver function test, in, uh, any PVC is associated with ulcerative colitis. Uh, so we need to uh, see that any liver function alteration. Uh, so any... what is associated with UC? UC associated with pulmonary sclerosis and cholangitis. So you mean to say that we should ask in the history 
if there is any history of jaundice, any, any itching, itching, any clay colored stool, any dark urination. Clear? Yes, sir. Because when I am telling to my examiner that I go need to go ahead with LFTs, he will ask exactly if I am ruling out PSC or not. Okay, what else? Oh, yeah, I'll do a scan USG ultrasonography of abdomen to find any organomegaly or any megacolon. Any okay, what organomegaly you are exp uh, suspecting in this patient? Any uh, colon mass. Colon mass, do you think that it will get visible on ultrasound? No. Gut is the least visible on ultrasonography. What else? Uh, well, as the patient has trachycardic and hypotonic BP is low, so first mm -hmm. we we'll resuscitate the patient. After resuscitation, mm -hmm. we'll go for the colonoscopy. Okay, so you want to go for scope. Anything else? Uh, small bowel enema. Okay. What you want to see in small bowel enema? Uh, a small bowel enema, any fissure or fissure lies there. Okay. Anything else you want to perform? Uh, I want to go for uh, um, some blood serological test like Sianka and mm -hmm. I also do for one is uh, calpro, uh, stool calprotectin. Cal stool calprotectin, okay. And I think we should perform all these before clonoscopy, right? Yeah. Good. Okay. What is uh, the management plan for this patient? Well, as uh, the symptoms suggested, the patient is suffering from acute flare-up. So first of all, we resuscitate the patient. Uh, if na, na, we dive with fluid, and if any electrolyte abnormality, we should be corrected. If the patient cannot tolerate the food, we can uh, start enteral feeding, and then we'll give for the IV steroid. After the, okay. uh, uh, after Is there the, uh, any flare? criteria to start this patient on IV steroids? Uh, this patient is a trachycardic loose motion more than four times a day, and mm -hmm. along with the blood mixed with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Dr. Biswadeep, uh, let's decode this case, and thank you so much for your performance. It is overall good, and you are having a good grasp on the case, but you are missing some points, and I will try my level best to explore and to explain to you exactly what should be the approach towards this case. So we are starting this case, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. First of all, see that this patient is elderly, presented to you uh, in your ER, likely ER, and he is a recent immigrant from Africa with a worsening of loose motion and fatigue. So first thing to focus in this case is that this patient is having this, this, see the screen, worsening, word the worsening, word the worsening, it means that the story is going on and on for last maybe few weeks, months, or years. His past history is quite significant with multiple admissions in the hospital for abdominal disturbance. Now, what exactly is this abdominal disturbance? This is our task to explore. No medical record is available, and I am seeing that this patient is not well stable. This patient is tachycardic, slight hypotension, and I am seeing that this patient is anemic with ESR of above or around 60. My task is to take the focused medical history of the patient, do relevant examination, and address his concerns along with explaining management plan to him. See that this case is a full package. And I need to reach the diagnosis, number one. Number two, I need to rule out relevant differentials. Number three, I want to see exactly if the patient is stable or not to be admitted in the ward or being managed in the OPD or in the ICU setting. So this is all about my clinical judgment. This case is approach building case exactly how you will take up 
uh, this scenario or this type of scenario in which they are not telling you exactly what is going on in the past and what is going on right now. So one thing is very sure for this from this uh, scenario that my patient is having some previous history and it is linked to abdomen. Uh, right now, the patient is having worsening of loose motion with the fatigue, and this patient is not very stable. So I am starting my history, and I am going ahead with OD para. First of all is loose motions and fatigue. I will separate these two symptoms. I am making them to separate presenting complaints. I am not labeling this patient from the start that this patient is having fatigue because of anemia. Likely the fatigue is because of anemia, but I will keep my mind open. I will keep my approach open. I will even think of complicate, sorry, symptomatic anemia, heart failure, maybe liver compromise, maybe cancer, even myasthenia. So I am taking this fatigue as a separate symptom. So I am starting from the loose motion and I'm taking the history first from the OD para. Please pay attention exactly. I'm teaching you the approach how to carry on this case. OD para is onset. Onset is about four and a half years back. So the story started about four year and a half years back. And the first principle of the basis is that please do not assume. Do not think that these loose motions are continuous for the last four and a half years or these loose motions are episodic. If there's any confusion, do ask to your patient. So, OD para, onset, gradual. Duration, about four and a half year. Then progression, they were stable. They were not progressive, but yes, for the last two or three months, they are getting progressive. So what was happening before? Whether he was having loose motions daily or they were episodic. So I will ask openly, for the last four and a half year, were you having the loose motions daily or they were coming in the episode? So if they were episodic, exactly what was exacerbating uh, this uh, these episodes and secondly what was the package what was coming in these episodes of course there will not be only loose motion so i will be asking about other relevant associated symptoms so progression yes they are getting progressive for the last three months so i am highlighting this point that this patient is having loose motion for the last four and a half years, but now for the last three months, it is getting accessibility. Then a relieving factor, when you are having these episodes, as you are telling me that they were coming in the episode, what was improving these episodes? Nothing was improving. I was going in the hospital and they were injecting me with some medication and they they were improving. So exactly what they were injecting. If he is telling me some clue, if he is giving me some clue, I'm thankful to him. Otherwise, it means that my scenario is not straightforward as I am thinking. Ultimately, I will be going ahead with aggravating factor. In the aggravating factor, any stressors even, any food, including wheat, wheat products, or even I will be thinking about milk products. Any travel, if it is getting exacerbated, say for example, he was visiting some village nearby and every time he was coming, he was having loose motion, so I need to ask. So what I am getting up till now from this history that my patient is having loose motion for the last four and a half years, and they are episodic, they were episodic, and these episodes were getting relieved by visiting emergency of the hospital. The treatment given, I am not aware. And also these episodes were coming after three or four months, which the history is lacking, your history is lacking. Ultimately for the last three and a half months or maybe three months, these loose motions are getting exacerbated. Now coming back to associated symptoms. 
what can be associated with these loose motions. So I am coming out of the box and I am thinking myself exactly what can be associated with the loose motion. Yes, it can be tummy pain. So I'm asking about the tummy pain, it is positive. I am asking about the fevers which you are missing. And yes, the patient was having fevers with these episodes in the past. Right now, for the last two months, I'm having no fevers. Then I will be asking about any mucus, any slime in the loose motions. It means that I am dealing with something called colitis. Then tenismus. Do you get satisfied or you feel the sense of satisfaction after each bowel movement or you still need to pass it even though it is not coming? It means that the something is irritating the patient rectum. There is something in the rectum. It can be growth. It can be inflammation. It can be anything. So it is telling me that there is something in the rectum which need to get explored. Now, with the loose motion, I am asking pain. I am asking about mucus. I am asking about tenismus. I am asking about fevers. I am asking about blood. So these are the associated symptoms. Coming back to uh, this case again, loose motion, the next step will be to separate the loose motions, large ball type diarrhea from the small ball type diarrhea. The principle is that there will be large amount of loose motion, very big loose motion in small gut, in malabsorption. In the colon or colitis, it will be small in amount and patient will categorically telling you that I am passing very small amount of loose motion. Then the pain, the pain is with the large gut when it is getting inflamed and when there is colitis, but the pain will be absent essentially in the case of malabsorption. So I am separating the pathology. I am separating myself exactly in which direction my case is moving. The third step will be to ask exactly the content of the loose motion. If it is watery, it means that whole of the food has been absorbed till terminal ileum. Right now, only water is left and I am passing water. It means that the problem is in colon, large cut. But yes, if you are asking the patient that do you have any undigested food particles or any sticky stools, it means that the patient is having malabsorption. The problem is in the small gut. Again, as I explained previously, that the tenismus is showing you that the pathology is essentially in the rectum, likely proctitis or maybe some growth over there. Again, let's summarize this case. And you should do that in the exam for yourself. You should do that in the back of your mind to know exactly in which direction you are going. You should organize yourself after every five minutes. So what information I am getting up till now that my patient was having loose motion for the last four and a half years, right now they are getting exacerbated with constipation. And this, these loose motions are always associated with the tummy pain, with the tenismus, with the mucus, with the blood. And right now they are getting worse. So what it can be? What is coming in my mind? What first thing is coming in my mind? Because still I am thinking about associated symptoms. I am at the R of Odipara, A, 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 associated symptoms. I have separated my case that this case is a case of large bowel type diarrhea. This case is likely going towards something called colitis or cancer or some inflammation or some bleeding vessel going on in the large gut. But still, I am not reaching the diagnosis. So I am asking myself what I am lacking in this case. Okay, so if this is, uh, say, for example, the case of IBD, I will be asking my patient exactly head to toe. I will take it as a syndromic variety. Take this patient as a syndromic variety. Take IBD as a syndrome. Take RA as a syndrome. The conditions which are having a systemic uh, associations, the condition which are having systemic manifestations, I really advise you to please take them as syndromic variety. 
what is our approach toward the syndromic variety that we will screen this patient from head to toe. So we are thinking that this patient story is going towards the IBD with one exception that for the last three months, this patient is having more worsening of the loose motions with alternating bowel habits. It can be exacerbation of the IBD. It can be something called cancer, but right now I am not sure. So let's screen for IBD. And what I'm asking, let's go from head to toe. In the head to toe, ever you got any red eye or blurring of the vision? Yes, it happened one year back. The question, my question is ever you got, ever means that he is now bound to tell me exactly the story of four and a half years. If I am asking, do you have any red eyes? Do you have any blurring of the vision? He will say no, and I will be flat. So I will be asking ever, the word ever you got. Then secondly, ever you got any oral, any mouth sores, any sores in your mouth? Yes, I'm having sores. Coming down, I will be asking the patient about uh, ever you got any joint pains, specifically back ache or back stiffness, I am giving an indirect message to my examiner that I am excluding extra intestinal, extra intestinal manifestation of IBD. Similar scheme should be applied when you are dealing with RSA, for example. You should follow the same scheme if, say, for example, you are dealing with the case of SLE, because these diseases are all systemic and we should be bothered about their uh, manifestation out of the primary site. So patient is saying, I am having no backache, no joint pain, but yes, one episode of red eyes, blurring of the vision one year back. Right now, I am having oral sores. Remember, the approach is, if you are getting any finding, any positive finding during your clinical consultation, immediately say to the patient to show you, okay? And Dr. Biswadeep is doing this thing very beautifully that I am telling that I am having the oral source and he is seeing immediately. Then the next step is to ask about any source anywhere in the body and the rash. Luckily, the patient is having pyoderma gangrenosum and aradema nodosum. Before I go ahead, uh, let me uh, share these findings with you uh, in uh, our case. So uh, during the history taking, Dr. Biswadeep was asking that, do you have any sore? And I was bound to show that sore. Sometime patient is taking it as sore, sometime the rash. So my suggestion is that you should ask both questions. So you can see that there is the sore which is quite well demarcated with demarcated margin with some necrotic debris or necrotic base over there. So this is the case of pyoderma gangrenosum. Usually it is on the legs, but it can be anywhere in the body, including arms, including trunk. So please, if you are feeling or seeing any such sore, do not make it confused with any other thing. Remember, it usually start as a red bump. It usually start like the patient will give you history that there was some insect bite. Right now, it is quite well mature and you are seeing that the borders are quite well demarcated with some necrotic material, some pussy material in the base. Then you should ask, and he is asking me any other sore, and I am seeing that the patient is also having some sores on the legs. This is aradema nodosum, and this is this is the typical location of aradema nodosum on the shin, but the history was lacking over there. I am not very sure by seeing that this is the aradema nodosum. It can be something, it can be abscess. It can be, say for example, a cellulitis. So it is very important to take the history. Is it painful? Is it painful on touch? Is it recurrent? How many times you're having it? It will uh, make uh, your pathway clear. This is basically fat paniculitis, okay? This is a hypersensitivity reaction. And this is 
autoimmune reaction, autoimmune reaction. This is very important. Now, then we are also getting oral source and this is very well demarcated source over there, the necrotic base over there. And these findings were uh, characteristic in this case. So what we are getting up till now that my patient is having IBD, likely ulcerative colitis. Why? Because ulcerative colitis do have overt bleeding, overt bleeding. Bleeding is obvious, bleeding is in front of you, bleeding is in front of your eyes in ulcerative colitis. And this patient is having, as you see, likely for the last four and a half year. But I am stepping back now. What I am missing? I am almost asking everything in this case. I am asking all extra intestinal manifestations of IBD. Sorry, you see that is ulcerative colitis, but whether I am asking about PSC, I am not asking about PSC, I am missing it. Okay, if I am missing it, let's see how to correct this approach. Let's see how to get back to the track. Now, the next step is, first I have done OD para of my loose motion, then a separated large bowel type diarrhea from the small bowel type diarrhea, and I'm very sure that my patient is having colonic diarrhea. Next step is to ask my approach, the approach if you're following me, the approach states that I will be playing with the system in which they are giving me the scenario. Is this the scenario of pulmonology? Big no. Is this the scenario of neurology? Big no. Is this the scenario of nephrology? Big no. This is the scenario of gastroenterology. So I will be asking all relevant questions of this system. What are the questions? Starting from head to toe, I have already asked about oral source, ask about dysphagia, ask about uh, any uh, loss of appetite, and I am asking almost all the questions except upper GI bleed and jaundice. If you're asking me, ever you got any yellow discoloration of your eyes? No, I never got any discoloration of yellow discoloration of the eyes. Then ever you got any itching, itching sensation? No, but yes, I will be still bothered about PSC. Why? Because my presenting complaint do tell me that this patient is having worsening of the fatigue until I am very confident that I am not dealing with the liver compromise with PSE, I will not leave the station. So fatigue is there. Quickly, I will be asking, which sort of fatigue is that? It is all the day long. Okay. Any drooping of eyelid? Just ask one question. Your friend, Am I senior gone? Any jaundice, any itching, PSE gone. So what is left now? Fatigue with the loose motion, with the bleeding, with the tummy pain in the episode. It can be IPD, okay, accepted. It can be anemia, okay, accepted. It can be cancer, okay, accepted. So now I am stopping back again. I'm thinking what I am missing. This patient is also having anemia. So I should ask the questions of anemia. Dr. Biswadeep is asking that any dizziness on standing from the sitting posture, anybody told you that you're getting pale than before any SOB. My patient is denying everything. He's saying I'm having no SOB, no dizziness. Nobody's telling me that I am having, getting pale than before. Fatigue, again, a big question. I am not reaching a diagnosis of fatigue up till now. So let's step back, back to my scheme. And the next step, the next heading coming in our history taking skeleton is now general question. And I'm always telling you people that these general questions are really bullets. They are always paving your pathway towards exact diagnosis. So you are asking about any fevers, no fever, asking about any weight changes. I'm always stopping you people that please do not ask the question any weight loss. Because you people are asking this question, any weight loss, what happens that you are missing a chunk of patient with weight gain? Always make it a habit when you are practicing, sir, do you have any weight changes, decrease or increase? Yes, I am losing weight.
If you are losing weight, how is your diet? How is your appetite? Okay, my appetite is good. My diet is good. Okay, then is it documented? Yes, it's documented. How much is documented? It is about six, five to six kilograms of weight over two months. It is totally unintentional. Now the things are getting clear in front of my eyes. The thing which they are mentioning in the history, worsening, worsening, worsening of loose motion. Now the scenario is getting clear that my patient was having IBD. Right now I am dealing with some cancer. Now another big challenge because this IBD, especially your UC is associated, you all know with two big cancers, either CA colon or cholangiocarcinoma. If we are not asking about the jaundice right now, if I am not asking about the itching right now, examiner's first question will be that, are you excluding cholangiocarcinoma with the weight loss in this patient? No. Are you excluding CA colon? Yes. This patient is having CA colon because for the last two months, this patient is also having constipation in between and he is losing weight of six to seven kilograms over two months. So diagnosis right now is in my hand. So I am dealing with the case of ulcerative colitis associated with extra intestinal manifestation complicated by CA colon. Now, it, it was really not tough to reach this diagnosis. It is just that you are building a wall brick by brick in the pieces, step by step. So now I am confident and I am immediately jumping towards my past history, any medication he is using, any hospital admiss uh, admissions. He is telling me that I am not aware exactly which medication they were giving me. Try to explore IV form, oral form. Maybe you are getting some clue, but he is not telling me. Okay, allergies, medication history, then uh, the family history. I am really happy in the Dr. Biswadeep history that he's categorically asking exactly at which age the dad was having, being diagnosed as a case of CA colon. This is really relevant. Then ultimately it's time to go towards social history, smoking, how many sticks per day you are asking Dr. Biswadi, but you are not asking me for how long. You are asking me how many sticks per day. I'm telling you that I am having 30 sticks per day. Is it making any difference if I am using these 30 sticks per day for last three months or using 30 sticks per day for last 30 years? Yes, it is creating big difference. So it is very important to quantify it. Then, it is not necessary to say, if you're comfortable, I will refer you to smoking cessation. No, simply say that so smoking in any amount is quite injurious for your health. And I advise you to please quit it. In this regard, I am referring you to smoking cessation programs finish. Then alcohol, if he's telling white wine, red wine, which amount, how much amount, binge drinking, then driving, illicit drugs, job, and ultimately travel history. I will not go in the detail of these history, and we have already discussed them multiple times, but just I'm telling this, uh, what you say, the skeleton of history taking. Now, the last is systemic inquiry. If I am missing something, or if I'm suspecting that I missed something, I should do systemic inquiry. Otherwise, I will go ahead towards examination. In the examination, the first thing I need to do, first thing, please make it a habit. Make it a habit, and multiple pieces candidates are lacking this habit and ultimately what happens that we are losing marks. Ask the examiner, make it a habit, fresh observation charts. We don't know exactly when these, when these vitals was taken. Sir, I need exact right now observation charts. So you, uh, he will tell you that it's the same like outside or maybe right now these are the vitals. Okay, after that, you are dealing with a patient of IBD Right now, the patient is not stable, and we are seeing that my patient is having is a tachycardic with uh, something called the uh, hypotension. So I will be uh, tailoring my examination according to that. Okay. So now I will be starting from hands. 
I will be seeing the clubbing. And Dr. Biswadeep, you are missing clubbing. Secondly, I will be thinking about some bruises, some skin changes. Ultimately, I will be checking for the pulse and the pulse is tachycardic. And they are telling me that, you can see on my screen that the pulse is tachycardic, but it is very important to see whether the pulse is feeble or weak or it is having good volume. Because right now I am dealing with this red flag. Ultimately, I will be going towards the eyes, showing light there, and I am seeing there's no jaundice, but pallor is present. Then coming down, oral sores, and I am seeing that the patient is having oral sores, and I am categorically putting this picture for you people because sometimes our candidates are doing examination very fastly. There are oral sores and you people are missing it because you are doing oral examination just for the examiner. Let's see, I'm doing that, I'm moving forward. No, please look for the oral cavity properly. Sometimes there are the finding in a lot of cases. Ultimately, I am coming down and I am checking for uh, abdomen and I like your approach that you're checking for tenderness. It is totally accepted. And you should also do deep palpation, which you are missing even before visceral palpation because my case is not going towards PSC. My case is not going towards cholangiocarcinoma. It should be in my differential. But right now, because the top diagnosis is a CA colon, so I will be doing a deep palpation all over tummy. You are doing superficial palpation. Again, I'm advising that I will be going towards a deep palpation to look for any mass, to feel for any mass, if there's any mass. Ultimately, if the time is allowing me, I will be going towards liver palpation also because maybe I am dealing with some liver mass, cholangiocarcinoma, something like that. And it should be in my differential because the patient is having weight loss to the smoking history in the background of IBD. Now, what to do about this? This was something which examiner is looking for. So I should be bothered about dehydration, hydration status. I will be bothered about cold peripheries. I will be bothered about dry tongue. I will be bothered about sunken eyes. Everything is very important because this patient is a complete package. I am not only dealing with IBD. I am not only dealing with CA colon. This patient, head to toe, is a complete package. I need to take the history of this person. I have to examine thoroughly this person. I have to investigate this person. I have to manage this person. I am not investigating IBD or CA colon only. I am investigating mistrasia. I am managing mistrasia. And mistrasia is a complete package from head to toe. Okay, so now uh, I am moving towards uh, further. Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Biswadi, please unmute yourself. And somebody please write down a Zoom chat box. My voice is clear or not? Yes, because sir. Because I'm speaking or speaking, I'm not sure my voice is clear or not. Yes, it is clear, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I should ask earlier. I was just keep on speaking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I am getting the messages. Okay. Now investigations and please incorporate in your mind that they are not only checking my clinical knowledge, the skill is clinical judgment. If you can put this fact in your mind, inshallah, hopefully you will never lose marks in clinical judgment. They are checking my clinical judgment. So Dr. Biswadeep, you were uh, slightly confused that you have to admit this patient or not to admit this patient or clonoscopy or prophylactoferrin. So I will be going stepwise. Okay. First and the foremost thing is that this patient is right now in my ER. I will be starting from uh, the blood pressure monitorings. I will be if the examiner is asking me about the investigation, so in the investigation, there will be a complete package. Starting from CBC, looking for anemia, then of course, peripheral film to look for type of anemia, iron profile, then ultimately total leukocyte count, extremely important. I should give reasoning to each investigation to my examiner to tell that I am a safe doctor and I am having a very consolidated approach. 
after CBC, I am very interested in going ahead with ESR and CRP. I will be very interested in offering something called stool detailed report. Sir, I am expecting over there RBCs. I'm expecting might be some puzzles over there. And I will be immediately going towards stool for call protectin or lactoferrin because they are a marker for inflammation in the gut. Again, I'm repeating that stool for call protectin or stool for lactoferrin is nothing but just a marker of gut inflammation. So if say, for example, they are getting negative or they are coming to be negative, it means that your gut is not inflamed. Ultimately, I am not going towards chronoscopy yet. I'm not going towards the fancy investigations. Right now, I will be bothered about renal function test. Maybe this patient is having AKI. I will be really bothered about uh, something called uh, liver function test. Why? Because, of course, PSC and cholangiocarcinoma is still in my differential list. I will be going towards stool cultures and coming back to stool, remember that in the case of IBD, if you are suspecting acute flare, I request you to please memorize these three things. These three things should be in your pocket if you are dealing with exacerbation of IBD. Listen to me very carefully. Number one is that you should rule out infections. Dysentery, simple dysentery. Say, for example, your uh, uncle is having IBD. Before labeling that he is having acute flare, you should first exclude the infection, which is a very common thing and is treatable. And of course, you have to start this patient on steroids. So you should exclude the infection first. Of course, for that, you are going towards stool detailed report and cultures. Second is very must for you that you must rule out something called Clostridium difficile. You can go ahead with the stool antigen testing, PCR testing for Clostridium difficile. Third thing is if your patient is having recurrent flares, or, or you are starting this patient on the treatment, but your patient is not improving, so you have to exclude CMV colitis also in the IBD. Why? Because they are strongly having it, and it is important to exclude if your patient is having a recurrent flare and not improving. And remember that for CMV colitis, do not go for PCR, do not go for antibodies. You just have to scope the patient and take the biopsy. So again, repeating, IBD flare, you have to exclude acute infections, acute clostridium difficile, acute CMV colitis, three things. Then we are still investigating our patients. Still, we have not completed our investigations. So Ultimately, we will be going towards colonoscopy, full colonoscopy, because no record available. And this patient is telling me that he has never undergone any camera test. And I will be taking biopsy if there is any suspicious lesion. Now, remember, you were telling to examiner that my diagnosis is not only IBD, but this is UC with CA colon. So right now it is very important for you to please tell the investigations of CA colon also. If sir, I am finding any growth, I should be going ahead with the proper staging by CT scan. Maybe I am requiring CT angiogram. If it is confined to the gut, of course the treatment will be surgical resection. Before that, in the investigation laparoscopy, I need to perform to exclude any deposits in the peritoneum. So you are also incorporating the investigations of your CA colon. So complete it. What we are missing, because we are promising that we are not only investigating UC, we are not only investigating CA colon, we are investigating Mr. Zia. So yes, I am missing investigations for pyoderma gangrenosum, pyoderma, uh, pyromagnosum mm. and arrhythmia. So these are clinical diagnoses, but if say, for example, there is any confusion, so we need to investigate them also. With the investigation of uh, pyoderma uh, gangrenosum, 
you know very well there are two investigations very good number one is pathology test and number two is biopsy your friend arade manodosum biopsy but yes you can tell to examiner that we are not performing routinely because these are clinical diagnosis okay so now we have thoroughly investigated our patient except siyanka you have already mentioned coming to the management of this patient again the management is of mr zia management is not only of ca colon or of ibd mr zia is a complete package head to toe so first is non pharmacological management then pharmacological management then surgical management okay whenever examiner is asking you any management option please divide it under three headings until or unless examiner interrupt you that no need to go ahead and tell me the treatment options so non pharmacological management in this patient will be just think just make your mind uh first thing i need to correct loose motions i need to admit this patient in the icu settings first you have to tell this i need to immediately maintain iv lines start iv fluids in the non pharmacological management now encourage oral intake then correction of anemia soft diet in this regard i am referring this patient to dietitian department also because this patient is having oral sores of course it will be very difficult for this patient to chew so for soft diet is required then ultimately correction of anemia then ultimately you have to provide some painkillers and some emollients for these skin rashes which you are seeing especially pyoderma gangrenosum coming to pharmacological management my patient is already being admitted in the uh, in our icu settings and i have already started this patient on iv fluids now what i have to do after this i will constitute mdt in the mdt what should be uh, who can be there of course radiologist gastroenterologist oncologist id teams immunologist all these should be there in my team okay now what i have to do i have to of course give replenish iv fluids i need to correct electrolyte imbalance i need to avoid any antispasmodics any drugs to control loose motion because my patient can go ahead with toxic megacolon right now i am not seeing any such complication like toxic megacolon but the patient can go if i am doing something like that then i have to separate my patient i have to divide my patient based on true love switch criteria first thing okay so true love switch criteria i am telling you roughly and you can see it in detail on the internet that if the patients are having less than four bloody loose motions it is mild the treatment will be oral 5 asa oral mesalamine and you can go ahead even towards 2400 mg per day then if the patient is having moderate to loose switch criteria what is moderate number 1 four to six bloody loose motions per day secondly minimal systemic involvement third is that the patient is having severe true loss of criteria in the sphere the patient will be having more than six loose motion with something called systemic involvement esr will be more than 30 tachycardic hypotensive with anemic just give me a second please okay sorry i'm back okay now it's time to go ahead with a severe one in the severe one we are giving iv steroids and admit this patient in of course icu settings this is 
the management when the patient is having acute flare and this patient is right now likely having acute flare but if you are managing any autoimmune disease please incorporate in your mind that you should manage the patient under two headings number one is induction of the remission and number two is maintenance of the remission this is very important candidates are either telling induction of remission management to examiner or maintenance of remission and this is wrong first is to induce the remission right now the disease is in flare we have to control it second is that you need to keep the disease in sleeping uh, you can sleeping state so right now you are starting this patient on oral steroids if mild criteria not sorry oral mesalamine if mild criteria oral steroids if moderate criteria iv steroids if severe criteria provided you have ruled out acute infections as well as pseudomembranous colitis after that your disease is in control now you have multiple option in a maintenance of remission of course the first one is mesalamine the second one is if the patient is having recurrent attacks the criteria is more than two attacks in a year or as you are tapering down the steroids patient is having again flare so this is the indication to start this patient on systemic immunosuppression like azathioprine ultimately if still you want to give as a sparing agents you know very well there are multiple options in fleximab and the others pilimumab for anti uh, sorry biologics for maintenance of remission but whether we are managing the patient thoroughly no we are still lacking behind in the management of underlying cancer because we are suspecting it if it is coming we need to immediately treat it and for the treatment we need to know, know exactly is this a confined disease or uh, which stage of disease is that whether they are in mets or not but yes if it is well confined localized then or there is some local agent spread we can go ahead with surgical resection but again it will be decided by oncology team depending upon if this is slightly advanced disease there is some local regional spread we can even think about new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy shrinking or downstaging the tumor then going ahead with surgical resection if it is really confined to the gut and is very local and it is uh, meeting our criteria of resection then we will going towards surgical resection then we will not be forgetting about of course uh non uh, um, um, social support of this patient financial support of this patient and exactly offering occupational health therapist to have some modification to ease the life of the patient i hope this is clear now yes sir okay so we will be having i think the question answer session at the end of this second scenario the clinical communication and if you people are having any question so you people should use the raise hand option to come forward but at the end of this second case that is clinical communication so anybody wants to have this clinical communication with me use the raise hand option please anybody want to perform anybody wants to do this clinical communication i am having one case come forward Okay, Dr. Dina, please unmute. Hello. Yes, Dr. Dina, your voice is clear and loud. Sorry, yes. my voice is clear and loud. <laughs> yes, clear and loud. Yes. But your voice is slightly low. <clears throat> okay. Um, I will change my place. Is is if it's still not uh, not uh, clear. Uh, um, we another can, one. We can have an echo in your voice. Echo, it's still present. Uh, is this echo or disappeared? Are you using any headphones? Are you using directly the mic? No. 
Your mic is muted, Dr. Dina, please come forward. Dr. Dina, please use the hand option to come forward. We are waiting for you. Please unmute. Yes. Um, if it's still present, is that echo, Dr. Salman? No, it is butter. It is butter. It is butter. Okay. 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 I am not sure. I, I will perform it, mm -hmm. good, but I will try it. It's so only I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. So I am giving you the scenario of clinical communication. Okay. My screen is clear to you? Yes, clear, yes. Okay, take your time. You have total three minutes to prepare this case, then get back to me, okay? Okay, okay. Take your time. Dr. Dina, I'm giving you a total five minutes. Please prepare your case. And we are restarting exactly after five minutes. Just a second, please. Just a second. Okay, so giving you five minutes, prepare this case. And we are restarting in five minutes.
okay dr uh, deena are you available uh dr deena please unmute yourself yes doctor okay are yes. you ready yes inshallah good inshallah so i am giving you your timer but before that let me tell you this is newer patients 23 consultation uh, sorry uh, communication and you will be given total 10 minutes okay and yes uh, there will be no viva followed by that and you will be judged just based on your communication your way to convince the surrogate and the way you are imparting the information on your surrogate so i am giving you your time amar and your time starts now uh, so uh, ha hello um, uh, can i uh, um, hello i am dr dina one of the doctors in the world today uh, can i uh, double check first uh, that you are mr arfan uh, brother of miss uh, mrs sapin 62 years old i am the same yes uh, not nice to meet you mr arfan i i hope that you didn't wait too much to see me thank you so much for your concern doctor okay so uh, we took permission to talk uh, uh, with you uh, about your uh, sister's condition and um, um, so uh, can i ask you first um, what do you know about your um, your sister's condition is happy i am not knowing anything except that my sister is suffering i am roaming there and here and there in your hospital to ask exactly what's wrong with her for the last one hour but nobody is bothered to tell me anything i'm yes. seeing her so can, can i ask yes i'm really sorry for that um, um uh, so so who brought her to to hospital when she got uh, this attack my friend was bringing her to hospital and i got a call i was there outside the city far away mm. from here and today i am reaching there yes i am sorry for that and she she so she is living alone okay yes. so um uh, actually mrs tapin um had um, uh, an attack of stroke i am really mm -hmm. sorry to use that and and um, as uh, as a result um she had this uh, difficulty in swallowing okay and difficulty in speech and she had she got also weakness in her right side of her body mm -hmm. um and uh, following that uh, uh, following uh, bringing her to hospital we started her immediately on these platelet medications uh as uh, this stroke as you know uh is due to occlusion of one of the major blood channels in her brain okay mm -hmm. are you following me I'm so, following you, and uh, I start... myself, the staff nurse. Yes, yeah, that's that's great. So we we are understanding each other better. So um, she uh, she we started here in that blood blood thinning medication, but unfortunately, as uh, as she lost her ability to uh, swallow food by herself. and um, she she uh, if 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 she tried to uh, swallow food by uh, uh, she may have these choking attacks and also cough uh, and she is liable to uh, attacks of uh, chest infections we call it we call it aspiration pneumonia are you with mm -hmm. me i'm with you so uh, we yeah so we we put for her this tube through her nose tell her gut tell sorry tell her, her stomach to be able to feed her easily without this shocking episodes and uh, making her uh, uh, enter in that uh, recurrent chest infections or this uh, avoid any complications due to loss of her ability to swallow food okay i'm not understanding exactly why you want to make her suffer please do not do that i humbly request you to please remove this ng tube i am seeing since one over that she is struggling with this tube 
And I myself was trying to put a juice in her mouth and she's taking it. This is just not necessary. Yes. Uh, and I don't understand your protocols. Yes, I, I, as, as you know, um, without feeding, uh, anyone couldn't survive. And also, um, as, as far as she lost her, what we call it in medicine, gag reflex, the ability to handle the food and also uh, to swallow food appropriately, okay? to make it reach to the stomach. She is liable for these uh, shocking attacks and also uh, she's liable for many complications that is maybe dangerous uh, uh, for her life. Okay. Therefore, and it's, it's, it will be, and, and, and as, as far as he, her stroke episode is being like um, uh, improving. So we decided to discharge her home and to ease her ability to, uh, to to get feeding. If I am requesting you to please remove her tube because she is taking juices from the mouth, what yeah. do you say? Can I understand why you want so? Why you are refusing this, uh, Nizugase? What we call because medicine? Because it is having its own complication. And I'm seeing the patient getting died after being placed NG tube. Secondly, she is pulling it out. She is not getting comfortable with that. And I do not want to see my sister suffer. Yes, yes. Uh, I appreciate your concern and, uh, and I appreciate also uh, how you care about your sister and her com being comfortable. And so it's very, very valid concern. Uh, regarding her discomfort, we can ease her pain by giving her some painkillers. And, um, uh, and she is not know. having any pain. She is having discomfort of this tubing. Yes. Um, at this point, at this level, uh, this tube is, is actually very important to maintain her life. Okay, to maintain her feeding, and and we don't know um, uh, her condition. What it uh, go, will will continue? It will maybe it will improve. Maybe it will worsen. Over, we don't know what is the the, the progression of her condition. And if this is the case, why you are not giving him food through IV line? Yes. IV line, actually um, less nutrients can be put through, okay? And the IV lines needs continuous monitoring in hospitalization and she will return back to her home. So um, it's very difficult to, uh, to maintain her feeding through this IV line. And, and the better nutrition for her, better, better, better lifestyle will be through this nasogastric tube. Do you get- What me? about putting a direct tube in her tummy? because it is having no risk of taking the food in the lungs. Yes. What, what you, you, you mean like big tube, which is uh, putting through the, the skin and reaches the stomach? Yes, Do you mean in the tummy. Really a valid concern, but uh, this, this uh, uh, decision was made by my consultant so I can make, uh, I can arrange a meeting with you, okay? Uh, discussing with him these uh, other uh, alternatives and your, all, all your concerns. So um, he make, you, make the condition more, more clear for you, make the, the, you understand more. Is it okay for you? Okay, so what's oh. your next plan for my sister? Yes, uh, she will continue in this um, uh, blood thinner, okay? And um, as uh, she still has this remaining weakness and this, her disability to feed herself, um, uh, I'm asking you, is there anyone living with her at home? No. Okay. But I can arrange my elder sister if it is required. Yes, and uh, she, she will like uh, um, give one or two hours with her or she can uh, stay with her 24 hours. Can you explain? I think she need a continuous help 24 hours. 
yeah, that would be great. So um, 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 I will uh, also inf involve um, um, social care, care workers, okay, to uh, make a check in her, in her place, mm -hmm. uh, if, if um, her apartment is uh, suitable for her condition, if she's living in the first floor and or she needs some arrangements and also if your sister is not able to take care of her completely, they can visit her like one or two hours per day, giving her all the care she uh, requires in her situation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Is it for you? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, our medical team decided that uh, she uh, now, um, um, we, we can discharge her today or, or tomorrow, it's, it's very recent, discharge hair after we make all these arrangements for hair. Okay, okay, that's good. And you are left with two minutes from now. Okay, uh, so uh, do you have any other concerns, uh, Mr. Erwin? No concerns. Okay, and uh, also at uh, this time we will involve the uh, speech doctor, okay? And the mm -hmm. uh, GI doctor and uh, to um, evaluate her condition if she uh, needs needs more uh, aids um, and, and and um, uh, and I, I I want to feel from you okay to mm -hmm. um, um, follow up her condition if she develop any uh, like any headache unusual headache uh, regarding that she is using these uh, blood thinners okay uh, to mm -hmm. uh, to bring her um, uh, quickly to to hospital and also um, uh, any chest pain, any like difficulty in breathing, or any attacks, you understand me regarding this uh, shocking or inability to swallow food, okay? Okay, I will uh, surely communicate with my elder sister. Okay, uh, and um, um, <laughs> Okay, and your time is also almost up. Dr. Dina. First let's... time practice station four, station <laughs> public like that, okay? <laughs> so. Okay, okay, that's good, but it was not bad. It was good, don't worry. Inshallah, hopefully with the time you will, uh, you know, learn the things. Okay, so Thank let's you. decode. Inshallah, don't worry. So let's decode this case, okay? Now I need the attention of all of you. And if you are paying the attention to me exactly what I'm teaching you, you will know the taste of RCP and exactly what they want you to do. This case- Yes, I was if uh, I, used to, of course. Yes, if I am yes. uh, doing this case, uh, as a general, from the candidate point of view, the candidate will be thinking that there is a stroke and I need to counsel regarding stroke finish. Let's decode this case exactly what is required in this case and what are the hidden agendas. Number one word is widow, 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 widow. Second, aphasia dysphagia, weakness. Third, stroke. Fourth important point, gag, reflex, lost. Sixth important point, NG tube in place, finish. Coming to the task. Task states that I am dealing with the brother. Need to counsel regarding social care and answer all concerns. This task appears to be very simple, but there are hidden agendas. Notice the word widow. Notice the word aphasia. Notice the word dysphagia. Notice the word right-sided weakness. Notice the word NG tube. If we are focusing on these words, we will be able to do this case nicely. 
and remember when you are entering in your examination hall especially in clinical communication there are various time hidden agendas like in this case the hidden agenda was the brother was a staff nurse and he was not uh, agreeing with the ng tube let's start first is the introduction hello sir good morning my name is dr hasan one of dr mcclain today am i speaking to mr irfan the brother of miss sabine 62 years old female patient yes i am the same so i hope i am not keeping you waiting too long to see me so establishing the rapport because you are not immediately starting the scenario without any rapport please pay attention please pay attention third thing is that you have to set the agenda why you are over here why you are meeting today we are over here today to discuss about your that this that to discuss about the health condition of your sister and its subsequent management fourth thing is that you are applying the ice i for idea you are not aware exactly how much the brother is knowing about her condition so what you have been told so far about your health condition of the of your sister so i am not knowing everything i am roaming around here and there nobody is telling me everything okay 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 blah 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 so you have to listen patiently it means that he is not very aware exactly what's wrong with the sister eyes i for idea c for concern do you have any expectation or any concerns from today's meeting now what we are suspecting or what is coming in our mind that brother is over here to listen to our scenario for next 10 minutes no might be he is aware about insurance of the doctor uh, the sister might be he is aware to ask exactly how you will provide management in the hospital might be he want to say that please do not discharge him back to the home because right now there is nobody at home he should be admitted in the hospital so concern sir what are your expectations or what are your concerns from our today's meeting it is very important he will tell you then next is explanation 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 what is e what is explanation now your task is starting sir your sister was brought in our emergency she was unable to speak take food down and was having a right sided weakness immediately we have done some brain imaging and we came to know that she is having infarctive stroke infarctive stroke is a jargon so we will say so don't bother by the medical term this is a condition in which there is a blood clot in the blood channel of the brain which leads to cessation of the blood supply towards that particular area and it is losing its function finish so beautifully you are telling diagnosis beautifully in a layman term you are telling pathophysiology why why pathophysiology because you are about to tell what you are doing for this patient immediately we started your sister on a blood thinner medication so that it should not leave any long term effects and also there should be no further clotting our team is thinking that this patient is having good prognosis and she will improve in upcoming days as she was unable to let food down in the best interest of the patient our team has put the tubing called ng tube in her tummy from the nose 
now as you are communicating with the patient you are seeing body language you are using small sentences you are taking little pauses and you are immediately stopping if you are thinking that he wants to ask something now there is a hidden agenda you are going with the flow and you are on your task and you are about to explain the social management but immediately what happened there is a hidden agenda please do not put ng tube bring it out she is suffering she is not liking it i am giving her juice and she is taking it this is hidden agenda first of all it is very important if there is a no 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 in your clinical communication do not give me warfarin do not give me steroids do not put ng tube do not go do lp ask why 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 will generate concerns so he is saying do not uh, do, do not keep ng in her tummy ask why sister is in trouble sister is pulling out the tube she is not liking it there are complications of this tubing okay 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 now the mistakes are starting from dr dina's end i am giving you a golden rule and a golden tip if you people can learn it from me today inshallah hopefully it will ease your difficulties in clinical communication remember you will give you will get a scenario in which there is a scenario to counsel the patient about warfarin and the surrogate will be pushing you towards docs there will be scenario to start this patient say for example on steroids and he will be demanding immunosuppressants say for example there will be scenario to start this patient on insulin and he will be asking you for oral anti hypoglycemics similarly there is a scenario like this ng tube and he will be demanding pag tube or say for example parental nutrition now how to deal in this situation there is a golden rule of thumb please learn it towards uh, from me tonight see first of all tell the benefit of your medication or your procedure number 1 ng tube is safe number 2 there is really low risk if we are instructing you properly that you have to give the food before that you have to aspirate if there is no aspiration coming you have to give the food and you have to keep the patient upright for at least 45 minutes there is a really low, low risk for aspiration regarding discomfort we will give some numbing tube some numbing ointment in the nose of your sister so that she should not get discomfort still no i need pack tube no i need parental nutrition now listen to concern say that your concern is very valid and these are the hazards of pack tube these are the hazards of parental nutrition they are not coming without hazards parental nutrition can lead to sepsis infections can lead to salt disrupts disruption uh, disruption in the body disturbance in the body pag tube can lead to infection pag tubes can lead to multiple complications bleeding infections something like that but you are now telling more uh, you are you know you are doing negative counseling about these procedures of these medication i am again repeating task is to give this patient a particular treatment or a particular procedure but he is demanding something else so the scheme is reinforce the benefits of your own procedure on drug then do negative counseling of that thing which he is demanding because your team has then the last sentence is that our team has decided after assessing and evaluating all pros and cons of all treatment options available that this is best for your sister 
but this statement should be spoken should you should speak in a very end not in the start okay so first benefits or indication of your treatment or procedure then the negative effects of that procedure or that treatment which you do not want to offer still not agreeing then you will say and also before i go ahead remember patient cannot demand the treatment patient can reject the treatment say for example i am a gastroenterologist and you i am admitted under your care you are saying me that you are a patient and you need pack tube you need ng tube i am saying no do not give me ng tube give me pack tube no do not give me pack tube start me on pint and nutrition even if i am a gastroenterologist i cannot demand the treatment it's a treating team who will decide to give which treatment in the best interest yes i have the right to reject the treatment i can say no to ng i can say no to pack tube coming to family members coming to next of kin coming to uh, the person having lpa remember lpa or son or next of kin cannot demand the treatment treating team will decide and cannot reject the treatment if treating team has decided that the ng tube is in the best interest so hidden agenda resort this was the hindrance in our case and we wasted at least 2 minutes to explain him why ng is required and if you are giving this water through mouth there is no gag reflex everything will be in the lungs we may lose your sister it will be really deleterious for her health and it can lead to bad infection give some fear to the patient uh, to the surrogate now coming to our main task social sport social aspects of stroke dr deena you are missing them first of all tell about ng tube care have to replace repeatedly after 15 days have to aspirate before giving food have to keep it clean have to give water once you have uh, given the food to clean that tubing have to keep it keep the patient prop up as you are feeding and even after feeding of the food at particular time this is ng care examine the nose for any sores do not let her pull out examine if the length of tubing is same or it is increased outside the nose if it is increased likely she has pulled it out very important points which you are missing then social support beautifully you are asking who will take care of her at home yes elder sister will take care but again a big mistake i will be discussing all these points in the next meeting with the caregiver that is elder sister i need to tell to the, uh, the brother but yes brother is right now in the room so i need to explain social sport social aspects of uh, uh stroke care patient uh, care of care of the stroke patient so number 1 aphasia salt team speech and language therapy team should be hired to make him speak again dysphagia again salt teams and we will reassess the gag reflex repeatedly third weakness for the weakness we are providing walking aids we are providing physiotherapy we have to change the posture of the patient repeatedly if she is not able to change we need to provide aromatorus if she is unable to change the posture we need to provide dvt stockings ultimately it is very important to assess the mood to assess the mood repeatedly in this regard 
psychological support is very important. And these patients are prone to go in the depression. Then exactly we need to teach them about patient hygiene, patient clothing, easy to change the clothes, special cutlery uh, uh, for our patient special instrumentation for our patient. Our patient will not be able to cut the fruit, to use the cutlery, to even eat the food properly. So we need special table. We need special spoons. We need special sport. We need special clothing because even it is difficult to change the cloth of this patient. In this regard, who will decide, who will evaluate? our occupational therapist. In the end, social history, I have already stated. And he's smoking, any alcohol, if you are having time. And then he, she is smoking, taking any alcohol, no good. Taking it, we will tell to brother that we will advise her to stop. We are becoming a safe doctor. We are covering the scenario in 360 degrees. We are not leaving any loophole that somebody can mark us that this suspect, this suspect, this suspect is best. Immediate caregiver should be contacted. Emergency numbers should be provided. Last but not least, give red flags. Very important, if she is having any bruises, if she is having any worsening of the weakness, if she is having worsening of the speech, if she is having any signs of hopelessness, they should immediately contact us. And these red flags should be provided in a very crystal clear way, not only verbally, but also in a written form. This is all about this case. Anybody wants to ask any questions or queries or confusion or problem, please use it in an option to come forward. Any questions, any queries, any confusions, any problems. We will be uh, uh, dedicating five minutes for question answer session. Dr. Mumtaz, please unmute. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Salman. Can you repeat the NG here again, please? and G-care, yes, the same please, thing yeah. that we need to tell, number one, he should be having the same length. If the length is increased from the nose, it means she has pulled out. Number two, there should be somebody to take care that she's not pulling out. Number three, this should, the nose should be examined for any source. Number four, whenever you are giving food or milk, anything like that, you should give the clean water so that that food should not get rancid in the tubing. Then when you are giving food, you should first check there's no aspiration, pull it out before giving food. Then you should make sure that the sister is prop up when you are giving food. Then even after giving food, at least for 45 minutes to one hour, she should be propped up before making him lie flat in the bed so that there should be no aspiration. Dr. Montaz, is this clear? And also, uh, so, it should be repeatedly changed. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so we should aspirate and make sure that there's no aspiration before we give the... Yeah. Uh, Okay. I, th I thought I thought okay. the usual, I thought the usual thing was to have an aspirate uh, with gastric juices or something. No, it it, it depends upon. Say for example, they're just gastric juices, nothing. But if the food is coming, okay. because you know these patients sometimes are having gastroparesis. Okay. Okay. Who are bad bound and all that stuff. Okay. Of course, okay. it will not be very clean every time. There will be some mm. juices, but the food is coming. Say for example. Mm, all right. Dr. Biswadeep, please unmute. Sir, uh, in like uh, fast case, 
uh, in each case, if even if the patient does not ask for whether he need to be admitted or not, we should comment about admission or this uh, opinion treatment. No, no, we have to admit right? this patient in the first case in the ICU. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. The actual, I was actually expecting a question from you that do I need to be admitted? So I do not comment about the admission exactly. So that's why I'm asking if he, if the patient does not ask about if she needs to admit it or not, mm -hmm. should we comment on it? No, no, we have to comment because the task is to explain management plan. The first management plan is to admit this patient in the ICU setting. You will say. Yeah. And uh, in second, like second case, uh, if the patient's brother asks about that, my uh, sister may pull the thing, the right stroke out of his nose. So should I restrain about it? So, so should I tell about the restraining? No, restraining is not, you know, ethically is right thing. That's what Just I'm you asking. have to take care. Yes, restraining is really, really a very, very last option and is not very well accepted thing. But if he, uh, if he do not ask, we do not comment on it, right? We will not say that we will restrain. We will not say. Okay, okay thank you. This is not, there is no option like that. Okay, welcome. Dr. Ahmed Baddavi, please unmute. Uh, yes, sir. Regarding uh, uh, home care unit, uh, I should uh, tell about that. Home care home unit, what do you mean by that? Team. Uh, this one doctor and teams can go to home and help him regarding NG tube and uh, check? Uh, no, basically first thing is the social support. Our scenario is revolving around the social, around the social support. Yes, if the patient is lacking social support, then we have to give social support. How to give? Number one, social support, social teams can send some social worker in their home. Number two, if you are thinking that this patient will not get accurate and appropriate care at home, we will shift this patient to nursing home. Regarding follow-ups, of course, she need to be in our uh, you know, stroke centers, OPDs for accurate follow-ups. Dr. Huda, please unmute. Uh, sir, I have two questions. Uh, yes. Question, I want to ask in scenario like this. I need Your voice is not clear. Uh, in this in second scenario, I want to ask. I mm -hmm. need to talk in the detail about stroke, define mm -hmm. uh, sign and symptom and the prog uh, prognosis and follow up or no need. And second thing. I can tell the relative there is hope to remove the NG in the future or no? Let okay. okay, okay, okay. Prognosis, we have already explained that the team is thinking that the prognosis is good. Regarding follow-ups, we are already telling that you need to follow up in the stroke unit and also we, we need to remove, sorry, replace the NG. Number three, regarding your NG question, this is a temporary measure because the treating team is thinking that it will be removed and that's why we are not doing PAG tube. And also we will assess the gag reflex once we are making plan to remove this NG tube. I hope this is now. Please unmute. Dr. Tariq. Okay. Dr. Farooq, please unmute. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa uh, Dr. Tariq, yes, sir. So I yes, have yes. Uh, one question, sir, regarding the marks distributed for this communication, clinical communication, and mm -hmm. uh, what do you call clinical uh, station, two mm -hmm. clinical stations. So uh, mm -hmm. earlier it was 28, 28 marks for BCC. But they now are same, uh, same skills, same mm -hmm. marks. Okay. What about the communication, sir? It was 14 16 earlier. 16 marks. Same 16 marks. Oh, 16 marks. Okay. 16, 16, 2. Yes. Two, but okay. uh, there are two clinical consultations now and two clinical communications now. Okay. 16, 16, 28, 28. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Come. Dr. Farooq, please unmute. 
डॉक्टर सलमान थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दिस वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन रिगार्डिंग दर्स्ट केस रिगार्डिंग दर्स्ट केस सिक्सटी टू ईयर मेल रेजिडेंट ऑफ एफ्रीका हैड हिस्ट्री ऑफ क्रॉनिक डायरिया एंड वेट लॉस so mm-hmm. should we keep the diagnosis of hiv uh, in the differentials as well as you said the cmv colitis that needs to be excluded in such cases hiv uh, can be your differential then you can keep it but again the thing is when you are putting forth any differential we should have any evidence first thing you need to clarify are you thinking about acute hiv or aids there are two different things acute okay. hiv can lead to diarrhea as per se because of hiv infection aids is a syndromic variety in which there are opportunistic infections first you have to decide are you thinking about hiv or aids if you are That's thinking both say for example even then we should have some evidence of underlying hiv or aids what we should dig out number 1 high risk sexual behavior number 2 okay. i we drug abuse number 3 any other drug abuse any other contaminations but we are not getting any such history still if you are bothered still if you are bothered then even aids will have some other features also what can be other features say for example lymphadenopathy say for example multiple chest infections say for example features of tb say for example multiple skin manifestations so what i mean to say that if we are okay. bringing it in our differential we should have any evidence clear yes one one more thing uh, in the history of chronic diarrhea should uh, should sexual history be in our approach or in our scheme very or only must, if it is suggestive must okay okay this is okay. must especially with the proctitis especially when there is evidence of proctitis what is the evidence tenesmus pain during okay. defecation it can be some high risk behavior say for example you're asking about sexual orientation is homosexual but remember these questions are really sensitive to ask should ask yes. in a very sensitive way na very non judgmental way clear okay thank you dr okay. salman thank you welcome, very much welcome welcome dr farooq welcome dr faisal please unmute thank you very much dr salman it's very welcome. informative uh, session uh, sir just i want to ask uh, what is the latest immunosuppressive therapies for ulcerative colitis if the patient is not settling on azathioprine there are multiple therapies if you want me to go in the detail it will take all night ibd is a very big package in the ibd you have in the immunosuppressants of course first option is azathioprine then ultimately there is some role of cyclosporine if you are going towards biologics the old the golden one infleximab then if you are going in more detail vidalizumab is there tofacetinib is there ostekinumab is there but i don't believe that they will go in much much detail from you people because you are appearing in internal medicine exam you should be very aware that you need to induce the remission what are the options i have explained already then you have to maintain the remission for that you should be very aware at least for ulcerative colitis you have um, as a theoprin you have cyclosporine then you have infliximab stupinimab tofacetinib is more than sufficient but yes if you want to go in more detail then there are multiple other things to explore say for example what should be screening protocol surveillance protocol for ca colon there are multiple other option say for example if the patient when to decide about surgery the patient is coming in acute flare and is not settling what are the criteria so multiple details i don't think so that they will ask you such detailed things but yes if you want me to explain if you want me to go in detail we all can have arrange some session on ibd we can talk on ibd we can discuss ibd in some other day in much much detail okay thank you 
Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Sharmista, please unmute. Good evening, sir. Uh, Good evening. Sir, I just wanted to ask you about the clinical communication after we build the rapport. So do we directly go into the disease process? Or, no, uh, big no, big no, big no. Yeah. So then what do we Your do? Your introduction. Okay. Patient introduction. Okay. Setting. Sorry, sorry. Establishing the rapport. Okay. Setting the agenda. Why you are over here today? Then applying the eyes, idea, I for idea, what he has been told so far about patient's health condition. C for concern. Concern. What okay. is any specific expectation or concerns to uh, 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 specific expectations or concerns in today's meeting? Okay. You should get idea exactly what he is about to bring up. Then so is it, how is it? I'm sorry, sir. Yes, yeah, sorry, sir, to just interrupt. So I was a little confused about setting the agenda and applying the eyes. Uh, setting the agenda would be uh, to ask the surrogate uh, what he wants out of this meeting. I am telling you example. Okay, I am sir. setting agenda of today's talk. Dr. Sharmista, we are over here to discuss about some patient scenario today. Okay, okay. Okay. idea what you know about paces up till now so i will get the idea how much dr sharmista know about the paces okay according to that i will start counseling teaching and telling clear okay. now it's clear yes sir thank you so much thank you welcome dr taha please unmute hello uh, dr salman can you hear me Yes, yes, very clear, very loud. Thank you, Dr. Salman, for this uh, such an interactive and excellent session. And uh, I just want to uh, ask one question. At the end of the this uh, uh, counseling session, uh, you are talking about the red flag signs. Can you please repeat that? Red flag signs, it is very important to tell to the patient or the attendant in any case. Say, for example, you are dealing with SL. What can be red flags? Patient can have pericarditis. Patient can have, say for example, CKD signs like foamy urine, decrease or increase in water work. Say for example, patient can have pleuritis, pain on taking deep breath in. Patient can have psychosis, mood problem, unable to understand so you will tell these right red flags to the patient or the attendant that if you are having these things you must get back to us coming to our scenario what can be red flag number scenario our scenario was of stroke red flags can be restroke red flags can be aspiration pneumonia red flags can be bruises or bleeding because if patient is on antiplatelets so we will give them if he uh, if she is having it they will know that doctor is already telling and they will get back to us immediately clear yeah thank you sir welcome 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 dr taha welcome and dr ahmed please unmute dr ahmed yes, yes. sir so just I'm asking about the uh, mouse ulcer with ulcerative colitis. Is it an uh, abscess ulcer? You know? Mouth ulcers are not very common with the UC. They are coming with Crohn's disease. But sometimes UC can have oral sores. Dr. Ahmed, is it clear? Yes, clear. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Dr. Mehdi, please unmute. Dr. Mehdi. Hello, sir. Asalaamu Alaikum. Waslam. Uh, thank you, sir, for your nice and interactive session. Welcome. So I want to ask about the clinical communication station. Uh, uh, you uh, tell us that oh, we have to change the NG tube uh, at a 15 days interval. So do we need to tell the patient brother that uh, Follow-up should be 15 days. Uh, Actually, interval. it is not fixed. 
that you have to mm -hmm. change it exactly. This is according to the different protocols, uh, the different trust, the different hospital protocols. Okay, you will not okay. fix it, and I will not suggest that you should fix it. You will just say that we will provide you written instructions, and also mm -hmm. it should be frequently changed. That's it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome, Doctor. Oh, you me, Dr. Rashid, please unmute. Okay, all right. Thank you for the session, sir, Dr. Sama. Welcome. My question is about the clinical consultation. First scenario. I just want clarification. Mm -hmm. Inflammatory bowel disease is as one of the complications you mentioned, risk of colon cancer and colon cholangiocarcinoma. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is this. How, what other question do we need to ask in addition to the B sign question to confirm risk of cancer complication? What other question do you need to ask to, in case this diagnosis is pending, is moving toward inflammatory by disease complicated with cholangiocarcinoma and mm -hmm. not cancer? What are the other mm -hmm. questions to ask for, from this patient if you of were course, taking that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we are dealing with any disease which is systemic, say for example, RA, say for example, SLE, say for example, IBD, I am always teaching my candidates to please think about two things at least. Number one, are you asking all associations? Number two, are you asking all complications? So this was the case of UC. So we are asking about ulcerative colitis. We are asking about oral sores. Sorry, we are asking about uveitis. We are asking about oral sores. We are asking about unclosing spondylitis. We are asking about sacroiliitis. We are asking about arthritis. We are asking about PSC. We are asking about pyoderma gangrenosum. We are asking about aradema nodosum. We are even might be asking about pericarditis, very less associated, sometimes associated. But complications, like say, for example, what we are bothered in uh, UC, what are the complications? Say, for example, symptomatic anemia. Say, for example, CA colon. Say, for example, cholangiocarcinoma. And we should even be bothered about them. Why I was bothered about uh, CA colon or cholangiocarcinoma in this patient? Because my patient was in a usual state of health of, uh, about three months back. He was having loose motion, he was having this episode, but was in a usual state. What happened that three months back, he started having bad loose motion with constipation, with weight loss. So it was making me think that maybe I'm going towards CA colon. Secondly, if the patient is saying, I am having itching, I am having jaundice, I am having right upper abdominal discomfort, I am losing weight, or maybe I am developing cholangitis, I will even think about cholangiocarcinoma. Dr. Rashid, is this clear? Very clear, very clear. Okay. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You Thanks to all of you, our active participants, our listeners, our observers for your questions. Your question was really high yield and concept making. With this, we are concluding our session. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend and goodbye.